What is going on, YouTube? This is Acid Roots. So I'm going to review the second album by MMG, Maybach Music Group. Basically, this album is called Self Made Volume 2, and it came out in the summer of 2012. Now, several years ago, I reviewed Self Made Volume 1, and I reviewed a series of Rick Ross albums. This is kind of another, this is kind of a pseudo Rick Ross album. He's on here quite a bit. His cats from Maybach Music Group are on here. Wale, Meek Mill, Stolly, Gunplay, some of those type folks. Omarion's on here also. There's a number of folks. The, the thing about this particular album, the thing I remember about the first self-made was just the fact that it had a lot of drill rap on here. Like Meek Mill was blowing up around that time in early 2011 and stuff. And it was just different from the sort of sound that Rick Ross had had previously. When you think of albums by Rick Ross like Trilla, and deeper than rap and that sort of stuff. It was just different. But on Teflon Dawn, Rick Ross particularly stumbled upon Drill, and it really dominated, and it really got Rick Ross to the forefront in like the early 2010s. And this particular album kind of does not have that as much. It has it in some traces, but it's just kind of different just because there's a lot, there's a swirling amount of amalgamations on this particular project. This like the sort of stuff that was going on, like Omarion kind of has a different pitch than he did in the 2000s. Wale's on here a whole bunch in his particular vibes. Like This is a pretty lyrical album. This is more lyrical where I feel like Self Made Volume 1 and I feel like Self Made Volume 1 and Teflon Dawn were both kind of drill rap albums that were not quite as lyrical. But there are some lyrical barbs on this project. This is definitely one that can compete with like some lyrical kind of gems on here just because it's just not quite as affable in terms of like the club hits and like the more frivolity that's kind of normally on Rick Ross albums as such as that. I mean, Rick Ross really sharpens his pen game. Rick Ross really sharpens his pen game on here. And there's just some ones on here like Kendrick Lamar's on here, Nipsey Hussle's on here, T.I.'s on here. There's just some good kind of assortments of things that just have a different kind of timetable for how some of this works, just different from the typical fashion. I wasn't expecting it. Like, I've known about Self Made Volume 2 for a while. There are some songs on here. Nas is another lyricist that's on here also. But, like, there, there were some songs on here like This Thing of Ours and, like, Black Magic that I've listened to. But I've never full blown listen to the full album and this was a different kind of swirl of things that I just wasn't expecting it's just kind of an odd kind of extremity just because some of the stuff on here just has a different pitch this is a different album than self-made volume one where that one had records like Tupac back and I forget some of the other ones that were kind of on there but it just had songs like Tupac back and I'm a boss where Meek Mill was just kind of more songs like Tupac back and I'm a boss and there's like some other ones like pill is not really on this album but there's just some folks on here that it just has a different pitch from like the early kind of drill sound that was kind of I, I know that this album probably could have done that but it just tries some different things now this is just a different pitch of an album compared to self-made volume one where I feel like some of the things there's just a good and I give Rick Ross and MMG credit for just the fact that these new tricks that they tried actually are pulled off pretty well this is a pretty successful album like it was it's been eight years since i reviewed self-made volume ones i think i would probably up the score of that particular album now i think there probably would be more songs i like off of it but judging by the score this album might get a higher score than self-made volume one even though i think i might like self-made volume one more just because it's a more bustling kind of good time where i feel like there's some good moments on here but it just does a lot more things and it juggles like a multitude of styles better than the last one did where that one was just more party cuts and more raucous and rowdy kind of times where this one has some amalgamation of just lyricists that are comparable and compatible with like the formats but they don't necessarily they're not just like making records like california love and ambitions as a ride by tupac in some of that sense it just kind of has it's just kind of a differential pitch as far as that kind of goes where you get some of these lyrical gems but they're just not quite as craze this time as far as that kind of goes and meek mill is on here less wale is on here more stally is on here more this time and uh like there's just some good different tricks that kind of go along with this but we'll kind of get to that so they talk about the singles on here and you'll kind of be able to see talk about some of the singles on here you'll kind of be able to see that some of the pitch of this is just kind of different it just has a differential kind of vibe as far as this kind of goes but we'll get to some of this so the thing about it is the first single is bag of money and the, the artists on here is Rick Ross, Wale, and Meek Mill, and then T-Pain's on here. So it's kind of surprising that, that kind of happens. But I look after it like 
Bag of Money is basically a vintage 2000s era hustle song, but it's also a ladies song, I would say. And it's got a good T-Pain hook and it feels retro, but it works. This is one that kind of feels like ripped out of Rick Ross's Port of Miami or MIAO days. Definitely feels like something that he would have done that would have been produced by like the Runners or like Don Cannon or someone like that from those kind of two th mid 2000s mixtape days. It's kind of interesting getting Meek Mill and Wale on that particular song just because it's not really there. Like this was years before they had blown up and that sort of thing, but it is a good cut. It just really feels ripped out of 2006 or 2007. It really feels ripped out of 2006 or 2007. So that's kind of the thing about it. And, you know, adding T-Pain to the song on top of that just only adds to like the 2000s kind of vibe about it. So if you're looking for like a Rick Ross song that's newer, like from 2012, but also is like his 2000s days. This is a good example of that. But Rick Ross is not really on the song that much. He just drops like a four bar verse. He kind of repeats the hook a bunch of times. He does the hook on the song and he repeats the hook a bunch and then drops like a very brief sh four, drops like a very brief four bar verse. And then Meek Mill and Wale are kind of more on this song. So it's not to say, I mean, Rick Ross is on here quite a bit. It's just too bad that he wasn't on this particular song. It would have been a pretty good boiler if he had been on the song more, but it is pretty good cut to kind of introduce these cats further as far as that kind of goes. Acting Up is the second single, and this is an almost song for me. This is a big city operatic rumbler, I would say. It's a decent, it's got a decent social energy for a rave night, but the beat just isn't as snipe as I would like it to be. That's kind of the concept. It just really feels like an opera song, it really feels like a crazed night. This is the sort of stuff that like Cameron and folks like that can kind of do pretty well. Definitely feels like something that this really feels like a thunderous kind of time and like a big city kind of skyscraper kind of feel definitely feels more of like an east coast kind of cut as far as that kind of goes but i just look after it i mean sometimes these operatic numbers kind of like how royce the five nine dropped rider's block and i really felt like that was a terrible beat for royce the five nine this kind of has like off Opera music and rap music kind of meshings can sometimes be pulled off, but it has to be really kind of nifty to be able to do it. And this is just an example where the energy of it really has like that kind of thunderous kind of night out kind of real craze kind of demonic kind of energy about it. But it just is not quite as catchy as like it probably needed to be. I'd probably give this beat like a six, six. I'd probably give this beat like a six and a half, like a light seven in terms of the quality behind it where it's decent, but it's not one where I would listen to like most of the times when I were to hear this in like a shuffle or something like that, or just the standard fair where you'd hear this sort of song. It's not like, an, it's not an addictive kind of song as far as that kind of goes, but it's a decent second single. It does have some crazy energy. If you're really getting turned up and you really have some drinks in your system, something like that, it works as far as that kind of goes, but it's just not a very kind of standard fair kind of song, I would say. And then Let's Talk is the third single, and this has Omarion and Rick Ross on there, and it kind of has like some Biggie samples in there from Big Papa and some of that type stuff. So Let's Talk is a pretty solid song. I do like this one. It's a glossy ladies cut, and it's, an, it's some easy summer glaze. Let's Talk is a glossy ladies cut. It's an easy summer glaze energy kind of song, and it's just a good fancy outing song. This is definitely good for like a date night, something like that, of stepping out and looking nice, I would definitely say. It's kind of a mellow kind of summer energy about it. It's just a good one for kind of, there's not a ton of songs like this on here. It almost feels reminiscent of Rick Ross's Deeper Than Rap Days. Omarion does a pretty good job with like the vocals on here, just an easy kind of serenade. He's a little bit different from like an R&B singer. He's not he doesn't have like the same pitch of T-Pain or Akon or folks like that. They're around the time. He's a little bit more kind of sensual than like Trey Songs and Usher and some of those type folks. So it's just kind of forgotten about to bring Omarion back out. He's just kind of forgotten about to bring Omarion back up to speed from like the early 2000s, talking 2002, 2003 to get him on like records from like 2012 and stuff. He's just kind of more of like a typical ballad and classic vintage kind of r&b artist so it's just that's the kind of vibes that he kind of brings to this but it works it's kind of it's a glossy song just for like some easy kind of summer glaze that kind of works so it's a good third single just kind of a lazy one not quite in not quite a gigantic highlight. I don't think this one would have charted all over the place compared to some of those. Like really none of the singles off in this album really charted heavily just in terms of the pitch of how they kind of happen. But they're just good hardcore rap, hardcore R&B charts type songs that just work for like the kind of more strictly hard. These singles off the album work in a more hardcore sense, but they're just good songs to kind of have us off to the side. Just kind of secret songs by Rick Ross and MMG to kind of have. So it's kind of the concept about it. It's just kind of the fact that these are just less known about and more kind of where you have to search a bit and kind of realize about. But it's just kind of the concept that 
these are some good songs, but they're just kind of more in a strict kind of sense. That's kind of the thing. But talk about the songs. So there's eight and a half songs out of 14 I recommend on here. And those eight and a half songs would be Bag of Money, This Thing of Ours, Black Magic, All Birds, I Be Putting On, Fountain of Youth, Fl Fluorescent Ink, Let's Talk, and The Almost Song is Acting Up. So just to be able to talk about some of these, like, to be able to talk about some of these like the real immediate one is black magic with meek mill and rick ross this is like a vivid kind of flashy drill cut and it's a good sequel to tupac back i would say it's an easy kind of nightclub hit and it's got a real tense vibe about it so this one if you like tupac back and you like some of those more drill type cuts there's another one that was kind of off of self-made volume one there were some meek mill songs on that record meek mill is really not on this album a bunch like the classic if you're looking for like a sequel to self-made volume one that kind of has those drill type cuts like rick ross on like i am not a star like rick ross and i am not a star and meek mill on tupac back and some of those type moments there's not a ton of those this is really the only true meek mill kind of vintage song from 2011 that he was kind of on and it's a great song with this, this this album just has a different pitch this time and i do miss songs like that it just felt like those days kind of ended a little bit too soon because i don't even know if there's a song like that on self-made volume three but meek mill had a pretty huge 2012 so he didn't need as much star power to really kind of do that sort of thing he had dropped dream chasers 2 which was like the most downloaded mixtape on dat piff back in those days and then he also was getting ready to drop his dreams and nightmares album so he had had a pretty huge 2012 so it's just kind of more icing on the cake for meek mill but he kind of did drop a bubbler on here and that was pretty good another of the best songs on this album is this thing of ours and this has rick ross omari on wale and nas so this is like a real lyrical kind of song this is a sparkly kind of promo cut definitely a promo dressed in press type song it's a looking nice bop and it's a good posse and lyrical cut i would say and it's pretty hooky like omarion really knocks the chorus on this song out of the park it's just an easy kind of highlight it's a real kind of flashy gleam that this song particularly has definitely a highlight one of the songs that you should immediately go for this probably could have been a single i'd say on top of that just an overall highlight of one as far as that kind of goes like all birds is another real huge hit this is a snap this is one of the best songs on the album i didn't know about this song before but this is definitely one i'm glad i stumbled upon this is a snazzy nightclub hit with some lyrical barbs on here it's kind of a sneering and gnarly outing song with some bite i would definitely say so this is just a real kind of vivid song i'm very glad that rick ross dropped a verse on this song he tears this song apart and french montana who's on here a number of times does pretty well also he does some real good gems on here I feel like he did pretty well on acting up that kind of helped that song but also all birds is just a real immediate highlight this is before french montana dropped an album back when he was still on his mixtape days so he kind of was almost signed to like rick ross's maybach music so he kind of helped out with this particular one i don't think he was on like self-made volume three as much and he was kind of briefly on self-made volume one but he the french montana appearances do help quite a bit this is one of the best songs on the album is all birds like another sheer highlight on here is I Be Putting On, and this has French Montana, Wale, Wiz Khalifa, and Roscoe Dash. This is just kind of, this is, a, this is a commercial song. I'm surprised that this wasn't a single. This kind of feels like a single. It's just so radio ready. It's kind of a dreary kind of early hours blear, I would say. It's a drowsy and kind of hunk. It's some drowsy and kind of hungover sleaze. This is definitely one I would listen to when you're kind of hungover from the previous night, that sort of feel. This really has a morning type feel about it. And it's also some blue collar malaise. This is definitely one where you're just going to work 7, 8, 9 a.m. in the morning, something like that. You got to get going, get the money, that sort of stuff. This is kind of a good concept to kind of hear in like the morning commute. It's definitely, I don't think this is as much of an evening song or like an afternoon kind of song. It's not really like summer heat as far as that kind of goes, but it's just kind of those hours just between like maybe 3.30 a.m. and like 9.30, 10 o'clock a.m., something like that. Just kind of hungover hours, kind of Waffle House and like uh denny's kind of hours that sort of stuff and this kind of the stuff but just being kind of drowsy and sleepy just in that sort of concept but it is kind of like a hustle song just for getting the money and just kind of that wake and bake kind of feel that wiz khalifa and folks like bone thugs kind of typically do so it's just a nice one just a good radio ready single fountain of youth was a real surprising one this has nipsey hustle on here and i definitely am glad that nipsey hustle is on the song because this is a pretty excellent one it's a very mirage like kind of summer heat song i definitely feel like this one just feels like this 
heat wave kind of summer type feel this mirage like i was saying it's really kind of vivid kind of summer heat and it's got some lyrical barbs on this song it's a very lyrical song and it's kind of some sophisticated summer glaze so when you think of summer songs when you typically think of songs like laffy taffy or you think of songs like it's going down by young jock or some songs like that from like the 2000s this is definitely one where it's kind of the summer boiler but it's just kind of more sophisticated and it's just kind of a lyrical summer like usually when you think of summer you think of less more frivolity and just kind of more hop and bop kind of tunes but this is one that kind of just has that summer malaise about it but just has the lyricism just to be able to give you some food for thought so there are some lyrical songs on here like all birds is lyrical this thing of ours is lyrical power circle which i'm going to talk about even though i don't recommend that song is lyrical so there's just some ones on here that do have the lyricism about it it's just kind of the concept that it just blends it well this is a good amalgamation where you can't complain about this album not being lyrical because it does have that sort of stuff on here and rick ross kind of ups his pen game like i was saying before he does it so there's just some good ones but this i do like the kind of club bops and the kind of lyrical songs they're both kind of amalgamation but Fluorescent Ink is kind of a mellow blue blood kind of cruise cut, I would say, just kind of cruising around this glazy kind of summer days as far as that kind of goes, just coffee shop kind of banter, I would say, and regular kind of day type stuff. It's kind of more like Kanye West and Will I Am type tunes. It's just interesting to kind of get some of these just because this one's kind of a blue collar kind of tune. This feels more kind of wind down kind of mode, but I do like the concept of just getting some of these just kind of standard, maybe picking up a book, something like that, getting like a coffee at Starbucks, some of those type feels as far as that kind of goes. Just really kind of this mellow kind of this lazy kind of sunset skies kind of song. I feel like this is a good kind of concept. It's too bad. Like, I, I would have liked for Rick Ross to drop the verse on here, but he is on here a lot. So Wale and Stolly, Wale and Stolly do a good job of taking care of this song pretty well. So that's a good concept of that. So yeah, I think that about covers it in terms of the songs I recommend. So talk about some of the songs I didn't enjoy. Like, I was really kind of hoping to like the Power Circle song just because it has Kendrick Lamar on there and a full cast of, like, the MMG crew. But it's eight and a half minutes. I mean, they really should have trimmed a couple cats on here. There just were too many rappers on this song. Probably should have been like, I, I could have dealt with five and a half minutes or six minutes, 20 seconds, something like that. But there's just too much, too many cooks in the kitchen on that song. Just couldn't get into that one enough. Just eight and a half minutes was kind of too lengthy. And I kind of feel like a couple of these kind of more street songs on here, like Black on Black and Bury Me a G just didn't add up pretty well. Like a couple of these more street songs and edgy songs on here just didn't really nail it that well, like Black on Black and Bury Me a G. Like I felt like at least Bag of Money was kind of like a vintage 2000s era song. But some of these like Black on Black and Bury Me a G just Black on Black and Bury Me a G just really feel ripped out of like 2007, 2008. And the productions are just not that catchy and they just are kind of bad renditions of showcasing some things on here. It's kind of odd that they kind of took a couple steps back and reminisced a little bit i mean i like the concept of them doing it i just wish they would have pulled it off better because normally considering that rick ross was around in 2006 and 2008 i kind of felt like those songs would have been better but they just kind of felt like vintage songs but they just didn't have the catchiness compared to some of the stuff that they were doing so those songs didn't work i kind of didn't like mia that much i mean that's a decent kind of boiler but it's just kind of bringing back it's kind of like a 2010s r b version of like a 90s kind of sensual kind of R&B type ballad in that sort of sense. This is kind of more bedroom boom type stuff that this was kind of, I mean, it's very tense and sweaty, I would have to say, but the concept about it, this was not quite as catchy as I would have wanted it to be. That That's MIA just wasn't as catchy as I wanted it to be. It probably needed like a catchier hook and just a little bit more of like a kind of more kind of contemporary bite towards it, where it's definitely kind of like a lo-fi kind of streaming highlight that you could have on Spotify for like listless nights as far as that's kind of concerned. But just the, the affability of the songs didn't quite wholesomely connect as well. It's just kind of, eh as far as that kind of went and then i kind of felt like uh there was another song like the zenith was kind of an odd one this was kind of one the zenith was a song i didn't connect with as much that one kind of felt like a hustle song where you just had something more big in mind where you kind of had like some big days ahead and you were just getting ready to prepare for it and just kind of the concept of just like a hustle song this with a little bit more meaning like maybe you got to make like a big speech or you've got like a big presentation or something like that just those kind of concepts but this didn't quite connect enough with the energy behind it. It's just kind of an odd pairing of a song that this was kind of different now to character for like a typical song that I would expect from MMG or Rick Ross or folks like that. This was kind of an odd pairing for once. I just didn't quite vibe as much with that. So yeah, I mean, 
the thing about this album is i was kind of expecting like more drill type records but i guess because meek mill was kind of established already it just tries some new things where i just feel like there's a lot of lyricism on here there's songs like but there's a lot of lyrical rap songs on here there's songs like power circle this thing of ours fountain of youth fluorescent ink the zenith and like all birds and some of those type ones where the lyricism has really stepped up and it's just kind of a different valve just because for folks who typically think that rick ross is kind of a pushover and that sort of valve and some of these other mmg cats kind of are it just kind of switches up the orientation to kind of get that i think that's just kind of the thing where this is kind of where it's kind of competing with like some typical kind of fashionable kind of artist as far as that kind of goes for like the forefront of rap and it does it i mean it pulls it off mostly pretty well but there's not a ton of records on here that really like it's kind of surprising that records like normally that would be easy kind of free throws for rick ross like bury me a g and black on black they just don't work that well and bag of money was not as superly dominant as i would have liked it to and even the singles like the singles are good but they're not like number ones number twos number threes like i would pretty much want like there's not really like a flagship kind of single on here that's just like the breadwinner that would have made this record go gold or platinum or something like that like i feel like bag of money is good but it's not outstanding acting up is an almost song for me and let's talk is decent it's a good kind of mellow boiler but it's just not like you know one of the best omarion and rick ross songs that's been done and this is kind of thing it's good it's solid i just would say the singles are just kind of more solid territory where they're good enough to kind of have a look at the concept where the new tricks are kind of more on display more so than the quality of the songs and it's just like there are some ones on here but the best kind of moments on this album are more the album cuts that's this kind of thing it's just kind of an odd pairing just because it's just more like a secret kind of rick ross and wale and meek mill and mmg kind of album where this is you have to kind of know about it more so than just expect to hear it on the radio so that's kind of the thing but it is lyrical and it is kind of like some differential tricks on here like i feel like songs like this thing of ours is a nice one and this songs like that bag of money let's talk it just kind of has just a good swirl of differential vibes on here it's just very versatile i'll say that it's a very versatile project it's just surprising that they pulled off this kind of ringleader type sound it's kind of surprising that they pulled off this ringleader type sound just within without the quality of like a couple huge singles to anchor it so me liking eight and a half songs out of 14 i'm gonna go ahead and give this album so me liking eight and a half songs out of 14 i'm gonna give this album like a 7.25 out of 10 i feel like that's solid enough but it's still kind of lacking i feel like between there not being a humongous single and like some of these album cuts just not quite delivering as heavily like i do feel like meek mill needed to be on here more gunplay needed to be on here more there just were kind of a, a couple of blunders of album cuts that just kind of felt awkward and just kind of the variations there just weren't like i have to repeatedly say there just weren't a ton of like really kind of crazed kind of lunatic party moments that's kind of thing it's just a lot more composed and a little bit more suited up this time than compared to the previous one where it just felt a lot more wild so it's just kind of more not necessarily bookstore and coffee shop but just kind of close within that vernacular of it where it's just a little bit wiser and a little bit more somewhat composed in that sort of concepts those kind of thing but 7.25 out of 10 the social score i'll give like a 7 out of 10 also because yeah the social score i'll give a 7 out of 10 because these are some good songs they definitely have the quality of it on here but there's not really like craze songs apart from like black magic and this thing of ours and all birds so i just would have to say it's just kind of the concept that these are ones that you have to kind of search for they're good once you find them but it's just kind of the concoction of who it's going to connect with and just the fact that there's not really like a huge lead single and one that just kind of stretches across like the summer and that type of stuff and there's some good stuff on here but the fact that there's not really like a ubiquitous song kind of means that you have to kind of be on the hunt for a little bit more and it's just a little bit more of like an activity to kind of express this to like your social circle and stuff so that's kind of thing so seven social in terms of the future like rick ross has kind of been quiet recently and meek mill is getting ready to drop an album wale is i need to figure out what he's been doing i'm gonna have to review some of his projects but i am eventually going to review self-made volume three and we'll get to some more of these but this is kind of a solid project here but it just kind of this is a solid project here but it's just kind of a curveball of an album i would say